Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Arch Linux is often subject of controversy. Some find it too cumbersome. Others find it perfect because it's the personally customized system. I have not yet presented Arch itself on my channel. Now it's time to take a closer look at the one and only Arch Linux in 2024. Let's give it a start. Arch Linux is a rolling Linux distribution whose roots go back to 2002. Arch has therefore been on the market for over 20 years. Somehow amazing that Arch has been around so far long and that Arch was actually quite unknown for many years, at least to me. I only really noticed Arch in the last few years when there were more and more forks. In fact, Antergos probably also drew my attention to Arch. But now back to Arch. Arch follows the KISS principle. KISS is an acronym for Keep It Simple Stupid. In other words, no extras and no big frills. Thanks to its rolling substructure, Arch is not released in specific versions from time to time, but is developed and updated on an ongoing basis. So there are no certain Arch versions or editions, but only Arch. Arch is a community-driven distro, so there is no company behind. The goals are non-commercial. In the past, Arch was perceived as rather idly test because it did not offer any graphical installers. The entire system process has to be carried out old school, step by step, manually in the terminal. However, the Arch project has developed further and now at least offers an installation script, Arch install, which makes the installation much easier. Nevertheless, Arch is still no beginner friendly distro in my eyes. Even with the script, you have to know what you're doing. As a rolling distribution, Arch only supports 64-bit hardware architecture. Arch supports LZMA PAC TAR archives as a package format. These were managed by the package manager Pacman. As a desktop distribution, Arch Linux is not the best choice as a distro for newcomers. The potential target group is experienced Linux users and developers. This includes power users, technology enthusiasts open source enthusiasts and users who want maximum control over the system. Arch is suitable for all users who value the highest possible flexibility, adaptability and control and are characterized by a high willingness to learn. The learning curve is higher with Arch than with other distros honestly. To get started with Arch Linux it is necessary to open a browser and surf to the web page archlinux.org. Then click on download on the top right here. Scroll down with the mouse until you see a list of mirror servers. Here you select the closest to your location and simply click on it. Let's say for example I am located in Germany, so I click some German mirror server, click here. In the following directory click on the first ISO file, that would mean this. The download is quite fast as the installer is quite small. As soon as the download is complete, you can verify the ISO file by creating the checksum. I have already described how to do this. The links are in the description. This step is optional and not absolutely necessary. Nevertheless, I recommend it. The checksums and signatures you find in the download section above the download mirrors. The traditional Arch way is still used for installation, in other words, the do-it-yourself method. As mentioned in the details, there is also the Arch install script. There will be a follow-up video how to install it in the next few days, so stay tuned. As soon as the video is online, I will add the link in the description of this video. Let's move on to the system measurements. My system with GNOME Shell occupied 5.3 GB of the disk. The memory requirement was 1.6 GB. 720 packages are pre-installed by default. Flatpak containers are not pre-installed. At the time of creating this video, Arch Linux delivered GNOME Shell 46.0 and that was at the end of April 2024. The desktop comes without any customizations. It is vanilla GNOME. Like Debian, Arch is a universal operating system and does not want to preempt the users here. Some people like it, others not so much. Apart from that, you benefit from all the new features that GNOME 46 has to offer. I have explained these in more details in my test of Fedora 40 Workstation. The link is in the description. Feel free to take a look. Fedora 40 Workstation also delivers GNOME 46 as vanilla GNOME. Here Arch and Fedora are currently on a pair as far as the GNOME offering is concerned. 
Like I said, Vanilla Gnome, if you click on the line and the dot here, you come to the overview. Here is a dock with pinned apps. If you click on these nine dots, you get to the overview of the installed apps. But more on that now. Let's come to the pre-installed software. We have Linux kernel 6.8. As browser, there's Gnome Web. As email client, there's nothing pre-installed. As office package, there's nothing pre-installed. And as software container, we have Flatpak on board. Kernel 6.8 is the current mainline kernel. As soon as 6.9 is released, Arch will provide it promptly. So if you come here at a later date, you might find yourself in a different situation. There have already been two performance measurements that hint at what is to come. Only a few packages are pre-installed at Arch. In the current situation, this will only be a fully fledged desktop for very few people, I assume. I suspect that very few of you will use GNOME Web as a browser, for example. I also assume that many people here also like to have a mail client and office package on the system. By the way, you get everything for free. Flatpak apps are available at GNOME Software. Let's check this out. Well, let's say for example Geary, and you see FlatHub as source. There is no other source. Let's take a different example. Let's say Evolution. Source FlatHub. So in GNOME software, there are only Flatpak apps available. But we cannot install the native Arch packages via GNOME software by default. Why is that? Well, it's complicated. Some say Pac-Man is not suitable for use in GUI applications. There are some discussions on Arch boards, for instance. But there is a suspicion why EG, Endeavor OS or Mancharo with GNOME rely on PayMac. But we can only install PayMac if we use the AUR. The AUR is the Arch user repository, a third-party source that Arch did not officially recommend using in the past. Nowadays, they don't seem to distance themselves from it so directly. However, it is not activated by default. You have to be a bit careful with AUR as it is a community repo. This means that there is no great quality assurance and the risk of catching a manipulated package is potentially the highest here. This does not mean that there is only attempted or corrupted software on offer. It may be because it's not an official repo, but it's a community repo. So different rules apply here. Incidentally, there is a whole range of useful terminal commands for Pac-Man. Here's a list that should help you in everyday life. It's from updating the system, searching packages, installing packages, installing package groups, removing packages, refreshing the mirrors, or a command for house cleaning. Arch is certainly a great distro for those who warm to it. I definitely do not belong to this target group. I don't know why, but Arch just doesn't appeal to me. Maybe it's because I need the computer to work with and not have to tinker with it if you allow me the polemic at this point. It just doesn't have any, let's say, sex appeal to me. I also have no desire to do everything myself. And just keep in mind, Arch Linux does not provide a standard desktop. It does not even necessarily provide a desktop. You can choose what you need or like. What struck me is that Pac-Man is fast as an arrow. This package manager is really designed for maximum performance. I have also Tumbleweed systems in use. And if I now compare Zipper with Pac-Man, oh dude, Zipper can really eat dust. As far as that is concerned, Pac-Man is absolutely top. The installation with Arch install script is a noticeable simplification of the installation, but hardcore Arch users will probably continue to install in the traditional Arch way and do it without Arch install. I still think it's a positive development as it is a good assistant in my eyes. When I read around the Arch forum, I often come across an elitist way of thinking and writing. You can also say that some of the answers to beginners' questions are given from above, along the lines of, you know that. But to be honest, I've also read this in other distro forums, such as the Debian forum. So that's not typically Arch, but smart alecks of people who can't deal with other people's questions are everywhere. But yes, sometimes they are just lazy bastards who ask about the same topic for the hundreds of times because they are simple too lazy to search for themselves and would rather be served a solution on a silver platter instead of working it out for themselves. Incidentally, I have installed my system with ButterFS file systems. The sub-volumes are set up correctly with add for root and at home for slash home. 
If you want to use time shift, start and set it up directly, it will run smoothly. So let's come to my conclusion. Although Arch doesn't appeal to me, I can understand why some people swear by it. It's the perfect distro for those who want to control things, organize things their way. It's a perfect match for exactly this target group. You just can't do it without graphical extras. When using Pac-Man in the terminal, always look carefully at the messages and search for a solution in the Arch wiki or forum in the event of an error or problem. You can do that if you want. If you have the patience and the time for it, because that's the crux of matter in my eyes. I can't find the time. I have to be able to rely on an update not breaking my system. The risk is lower the less the system rolls and more it becomes static LTS. Imagine you're at a customer premises and want to present a solution, but you can't because an update has crashed the bootloader or something else is not working or the system is simply on strike. Game over. That's the worst case scenario. Admittedly, you don't update your system before an important customer appointment, of course. But the key message is that the rolling substructure also brings a lot of change to the system. The packages are not so finely tuned and problems can always arise here and there with sooner or later a call for your time and attention. If you can master this and are keen to learn a lot with your system, then Arch might be the right challenge for you. If you don't have the time and patience or if you lack the necessary in-depth knowledge at one point or another, then Arch is definitely not the most suitable distro for you. What are your thoughts on Arch? The perfect distro or just for those who have enough time in the day? I say it in such polarizing way on a purpose because I would also like to find out whether I have great Arch users among my viewers or not. If you probably already guessed it, I'm not going to be an Arch user in future. But what about you? Please write your thoughts and your feelings in the comments. I'm already curious. Thank you for the kind attention. If you're interested in Linux content, please subscribe to the channel. Give the video a thumbs up and activate the bell to get immediately informed when a new video is released. Running a Linux YouTube channel takes a lot of time and a creator puts more time into a video like this than what you've just seen. If you would like to support my project or my work, you can do it for instance via YouTube channel membership or via PayPal. The details are in the description. Thanks for those who already support me. So, have a nice day ladies and gentlemen. See you soon. Peace.